Good morning. My name is Luca Fricoli. I am a PhD student at Politecnico di Milano. I'm here to present you my paper, Strengthening Sequential Side Channel Attacks Through Change Detection. This work was developed in a collaboration between Politecnico di Milano and ST Microelectronics. Let's start by defining sequential attacks, which form the class of side channel attacks we investigate in this work. The typical target of these attacks is a decryption function that reads the secret key, one bit or a chunk of bits at a time, and computes different operations depending on this key value. These operations have intermediate results, which will eventually become the decrypted message. The aim of a sequential attack is to reconstruct these intermediate values, which is equivalent to reconstructing the secret key, by using a distinguisher. The distinguisher is a function that links together the um, intermediate value computed in the previous step, the key bit candidate, which we indicate by x, and the side channel data. Since the uh, distinguisher, uh, which for example might be a correlation coefficient, uh, has higher values when the key candidate x is correct and uh, lower values otherwise, the, um, the reconstructed key bit value, which we indicate by b hat of k, is selected as the candidate maximizing the distinguisher. A consequence of this sequential structure is error propagation, which means that when a reconstructed key value is wrong, all the following guesses will not be reliable. This is due to the fact that the reconstructed key value is used here to compute the uh, intermediate result. So if the key guess here is wrong, also the intermediate value will be wrong. But this wrong result will then be used in the following step to, uh, to reconstruct the following key bit. So this uh, uh, the following guess will not be reliable because it will be based on wrong assumptions, and so on for all the following guesses. Can this property help attackers in practice? The answer is certainly yes. Error propagation has a very strong effect on sequential attacks and has been called a error detection property. In particular, if we record the maximum distinguisher values obtained in each iteration, we can observe that before and after the first error, which in this example occurred around, around step 700, the distinguisher will follow two different distributions. By detecting this uh, distribution change, an attacker might uh, find and correct the error, improving the effectiveness of the attack. A popular approach to uh, improve sequential attacks by error detection is to set a threshold gamma to separate the two distributions. Then an error will be detected when the distinguisher goes below this threshold. However, this approach has a major drawback as the two distributions might be overlapping as we can see in this example. This results in a large number of false positives because the threshold is not a suitable instrument to separate these two distributions. Indeed, all these uh, steps of the attack would be considered errors by this criterion because the distinguisher is below the threshold, even though the key is correct. The motivation for our work is this limitation of the state of the art uh, regarding these sequential attacks. We believe that our experience in signal and data stream analysis can help us find more suitable instruments to strengthen sequential attacks by better error detection. But before talking about our solution, let me define more formally the problems we are going to address. The first problem is error detection, which means to estimate the location of the first error, which we indicate by tau, and which is formally defined as the first index of the attack in which the reconstructed key value is different from the true one. The second problem we address is error correction, which means to correct the first error using its estimated location, which we, in, which we indicate as hat tau. This problem is not trivial, as the detection might be inaccurate, 
which means that her tau might be slightly different from tau, or it might even be a false positive. Now let's see our full solution. We propose to add to the structure of sequential attacks two more steps to be performed after each iteration. The first is an error detection procedure, which consists of uh, an online statistical test to detect distribution changes in the sequence of distinguished values. When a change is detected, we activate the second step, which is a correction procedure, consisting of a brute force search over a small window centered at the detected change point. And again, a statistical analysis of the distinguisher to select the correct combination. Due to the drawbacks of using thresholds, we employ in our error detection strategy a statistical change detection test, which is able to detect slight changes so that the overlap between the two distributions will not be a problem. And it also allows us to control the false alarm probability, which is very important. In particular, we use a change point model, or CPM, to monitor the distinguishing sequence. This test uses the Lepage statistic to compare the distributions of two consecutive windows within the sequence. The test tries all the possible partitionings within the sequence. And since the statistic is higher when the two distributions in the two windows are more different from each other, uh, a change will be detected when the uh, maximum value of the statistic exceeds a certain threshold. Uh, and uh, the detected change point will be exactly the index maximizing the statistic. Note that this uh, plot here on the right refers to a test that is um, uh, taken when k is uh, the last iteration of the attack winner, which in our case is 2048. But in practice, the test will be executed after each iteration in order to have an online fetch. So um, our error detection procedure finds uh, an error whenever, an, whenever a change point is detected in uh, the uh, sequence of distinguisher values uh, by the CPM. Now uh, let's see our correction strategy. As I said before, it is based on a brute force search over a small window centered at the detected change point. So for each combination X, of the brute force window, we set the corresponding uh, reconstructed key bit values to uh, the combination X and compute the corresponding intermediate values accordingly as they would be in uh, the sequential attack. Then we restart the attack from the first step after the brute force window and continue recording the distinguisher values. Then we run a statistical test to, um, to decide whether the uh, distribution of the distinguisher in these two windows before and after the brute force window uh, have the same distributions. When the test yields enough statistical evidence to say that the two distributions are the same, uh, the corresponding combination X is selected as the correct one. When uh, none of the uh, combinations is selected by this procedure, the correction is not considered successful and it will be repeated using a larger brute force window. At the end, if the correction is never successful, uh, the um, combination maximizing the statistic in uh, the test uh, will be selected as the most likely combination. Our correction procedure is based on the idea that during the brute force, when the combination is wrong, the distinguisher will follow different distributions before and after the brute force window, which is the same idea as our detection method. And uh, while when uh, the uh, combination is correct, the distinguisher will follow the same distribution before and after the brute force window. As you might have noticed, we don't analyze the samples from the brute force window to select the correct combination, but only the samples before and after. This is due to the fact that the CPM might yield a false alarm as any other statistical test, which means that an error might be detected even though the key is correct. This is typically due to a small set of unusual distinguisher values 
very close to the detected change point. So these values are very likely to fall into the brute force window. So by removing this window from the monitoring, we are able to uh, find the correct combination, which in case of a false alarm would be the same that was detect find found at the, uh, by the original attack by comparing the distributions before and after these uh, unusual values that triggered the false alarm. Another important issue of our correction procedure is the brute force window size. As I said before, the detection might be inaccurate, meaning that hat tau is not always equal to tau. And that's why we consider a window instead of a single index hat tau. Of course, a large window would allow us to correct more errors, but the computational cost would increase exponentially with the window size. For this reason, we developed a greedy strategy so that we start from a small window, which is computationally cheap and also sufficient to correct the vast majority of the errors, as we can see in this uh, histogram we obtained from an example of an attack. And we increase the window size only in the rare cases in which the correction is not successful, which means that the uh, detection is very inaccurate, as in these rare cases. By doing so, we uh, reduce the overall computational cost of the strengthened attack, by, uh, and also we maintain the same correction power. We have implemented and tested our error detection and correction methodology on two different sequential attacks against the RSA from the literature. The first is a horizontal correlation power analysis attack, which simulates in each iteration the intermediate products of the square multiply always exponentiation, uh, depending on the qubit value. The distinguisher is a correlation coefficient between the Hamming weights of the words forming the um, first operand of these multiplications, which depend on the sigma t, and uh, the power consumption samples corresponding to the reading of these words in, uh, uh, in a single power phase. In the correction, we continue the attack for 30 steps for each tested combination. So this right window we compare, use to compare distributions, will contain 30 steps. And we use the Mann-Whitney test statistic to compare these, uh, the two windows before, before and after the brute force window to select the correct combination as we explained before. The second attack we consider is a timing attack targeting a sliding window exponentiation. This attack decides whether a subtraction is done at the end of the last Montgomery multiplication of each iteration. In practice, we have a large set of ciphertext paired with the time taken to decrypt them with the same secret key. And in each iteration and for each possible value of the sliding window, the attacker separates in two sets those ciphertexts for which a subtraction is done in that iteration and those for which it is not computed. The distinguisher is the difference between the average computation time between these two sets, which we expect to show a statistical difference uh, when the guess is correct due to the time taken to compute the uh, subtraction. This effect will be more evident when considering a very large number of timing measures. Each iteration of this attack has a quite high computational cost because the same operations have to be performed for a large number of ciphertexts. For this reason, it is infeasible to continue the attack for a certain number of steps for each brute force combination as we did in the correlation attack. Therefore, for each combination, we continue the attack until a new change point is found by the CPM, excluding the brute force window as before. When the new change point is greater than the previous one, we select the corresponding combination as the correct one and continue the attack from that point. Now I will present the experiments we performed to evaluate the effectiveness of our solution. We tested the horizontal correlation attack using two different power consumption dubsets. The first contains two simulated traces of a square multiply always exponentiation using the school book multiplication, while the second contains 10 real traces of a multiply and square exponentiation using Montgomery multiplication measured by chip whisperer. 
in both cases, the traces were very clean because the simulated power does not contain any kind of noise. And the real traces were also measured in ideal conditions, so they contain little noise. For this reason, we artificially added simulated Gaussian noise to achieve lower and more realistic values of the SNR, so uh, the signal to noise ratio. Let's see the results. The first figure of merit we observe is the success rate of the strengthened attack compared to the original attack and also to the original attack equipped with the state of the art error detector based on threshold. As we can see, in both cases, uh, a lower SNR results in a lower success rate. However, our strengthened attack is more robust to noise with respect to the original attack and also to the uh, threshold-based technique, which yields only marginal improvement. We also observed the number of detected change points and the runtime of the successful attack. As we expected, the number of change points increases when the SNR decreases due to the fact that a higher level of noise causes uh, the, um, the attack to commit more errors. The runtime increases consistently with the change points because the uh, correction procedure has to be activated and executed more often. As for the timing attack, we tested it using the runtime measurements of the sliding window exponentiation of a large set of ciphertext uh, using Montgomery multiplication, measured on a microcontroller. The attack employs um, pools of this timing measurement drawn from this set, and the amount of timing measurement used for each attack, which we indicate as capital N, uh, will play the same role as the SNR in the previous attack. Let's now see the result. The first fact we observe is that it is completely impossible to carry out the timing attack without correcting the errors, as the um, original attack has zero success rate using these uh, values of n, which are already quite high, while uh, our strengthened attack has um, much better performance. As in the previous attack, we can see that the, um, uh, the success rate decreases when the uh, n, the number of measurements, decreases. And consistently with the other attack, the number of change points increases as the, uh, as the attack makes more errors with lower values of n. And the runtime increases consistently with the number of change points as the correction procedure has to be activated more often. In conclusion, we have introduced an error detection and correction methodology that can be applied to any sequential attack using uh, rigorous statistical tools such as change detection tests. Our experiments show that our methodology can significantly improve the performance of sequential attacks, while threshold-based techniques bring only marginal improvement. The take-home message is that even though sequential attacks are considered infeasible due to noise in the side channel data, or to the high number of measurements they require, they can be easily strengthened using suitable statistical tools. So the countermeasure of preventing these attacks, such as key blinding, should be employed whenever it is possible. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention and see you at the live presentation.